Good day ladies and gentlemen. I've decided to make this video to ask one simple question of the Mapumalanga Police Services. What is going on? It is now already more than eight months ago since this press release and when the following article appeared in a report newspaper in which it is said that you have irrefutable evidence that Willem's body and truck were placed in the river a week after his death and that you are ready to charge several people who were at the party that night with obstruction of justice and perjury based on irrefutable evidence that these people lied to the police about what happened that evening. So what is the so-called irrefutable evidence? And why has it not led to the charges you said were imminent? Are you still investigating? What are you still investigating when you already had it solved in December last year? If not, why then the press release and the newspaper interviews? You said in the press release that you decided to share the progress of the investigation after receiving numerous calls from concerned members of the public who were keen to know the status of the investigation. Well, here we are, eight months later, and people desire to know what's going on now more than back then. So where are your press releases now? I will tell you why we haven't heard a peep from you since December. You have nothing. Let me repeat that. You have nothing. You don't have irrefutable evidence of murder, foul play, perjury, etc. And admitting it now will not only be embarrassing, but will also expose possible corruption within your midst. Let me remind you what Harry Nell from every forum found during their investigation, as reported in this newspaper article. They found that a certain private investigator fabricated WhatsApp messages to cast a suspicion on a few farmers that were at the party that night. This corrupt private investigator was apparently paid handsomely for his services. Eventually, I will expose him. So it certainly appears that someone, for reasons I don't know, wanted to use Willem's death to cause trouble for these farmers. And this would obviously only work if Willem's death was not considered an accident. Harry Nell also found that certain police officers tried to mislead the family and that they purposefully did not investigate the fraud surrounding the fabricated WhatsApp messages. This is what Harry Nell wrote in a letter to the National Police Commissioner, as well as the head of the Hawks. The unwillingness to investigate the alleged fabricated WhatsApp messages that incriminate certain individuals is incomprehensible. Our client was misled over authenticity of these messages, which we know is false. Apparently, all the letters of complaint written by Gerinald to senior police management were ignored. Why? So someone paid money to a private investigator to fabricate the WhatsApp messages. And knowing that they were false, the police proceeded nonetheless to mislead the family and ultimately the public, hence the press release and the newspaper interviews. Now knowing what we know about corruption in the police, we must consider the possibility that certain police officers were bribed or unduly influenced by the same person that hired the private investigator. I'm not saying that all police officers working on this case and or within the Mapumalanga police services are corrupt, but we cannot discount the possibility that there are a few bad apples spoiling this case. We also cannot discount the possibility that the same private investigator or someone else, for, gener for generous compensation of course, might have fabricated other evidence but to steer the police's investigation in the wrong direction. If you want to know more about the extent of corruption in the South African police services, I encourage you to read this paper by a senior lecturer at the Department of Criminal Justice and Procedure at the University of the Western Cape. Thus, you can see the danger to certain police officers and other individuals if the truth is admitted that Willem's death was an unfortunate accident. It can get a lot of people in serious trouble. And an accident it certainly was. My previous videos present and discuss in detail the objective evidence that points to an accident. 
evidence that the police decided to ignore and then know they will not be able to provide a plausible justification as to why this evidence should not be disregarded. Now, here are some more evidence that points to death by drowning. The autopsy report found that there were hemorrhages on the left and right petrous bones in the middle cranial fossa base of the skull. It's important to note that there were no skull fractures, as no fractures were observed during the autopsy that was performed by two different pathologists. Now many people believe that the bleeding was the result of trauma to the head after someone assaulted Willem. It is risky to assume that whatever caused the bruises to Willem's scalp definitely caused the bleeding inside the skull, as there are other factors that could have caused the bleeding, as I will demonstrate to you next. The petrous bones are these areas here, and that is where the hemorrhages were observed. If we do a Google search for temporal bone hemorrhages and exclude results that include the word fracture, we get these results. The top seven results are all research studies and papers that study temporal bone hemorrhages and drowning. Read them for yourself and come to your own conclusions. So how does drowning cause temporal bone hemorrhages? Now the middle ear is connected to the back of the throat through the eustachian tube. Does any change of pressure in the respiratory system will also change the pressure in the ear. During the process of drowning, an intense negative pressure can be created in the ear by the violent gushing of water in and out of the lungs. An intact tympanic membrane prevents the equalization of pressure between the inner and the outer ears. This intense negative pressure can cause the capillaries in the soft tissues of the middle ear, the mastoid air cells and the inner ear to rupture, resulting amongst others in hemorrhaging. Just more evidence in the domain of objective science that will be dismissed by the police and those that continue to believe in the face of all evidence that Willem was murdered. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you to apply pressure to police in any way you can for them to tell us what is going on. Don't fall for, we are still investigating. Seems they had all the irrefutable evidence in December last year already. And that was already more than a year after Willem's death. I'd say they had enough time. And any excuse from them is just a feeble attempt to buy more time. Dear police, how do you think this is going to end? That people will just forget and go on? What is your end game? Thank you for your time, ladies and gentlemen. If you have any information that will shed light on the possible corruption and the external influences in this case that I alluded to, please let me know. My email address is in the description below. As always, your identity will remain strictly confidential and any information will only be released with your express permission. Let's get to the bottom of this together.